Welcome back. So in the last lesson, we looked at scripts, uh, templating tools, and uh, configuration management tools, all as part of the broad categories of infrastructure's code tooling available. Uh, now this lesson, we'll look at the last two categories of our list, uh, the orchestration tools and provisioning tools. So let's kick things off with exploring the orchestration tool category first. With most applications these days running on resources consisting of virtual machines or containers running on your servers and you know, data centers or hosted on a public cloud service provider, uh, all these individual VMs or container instances can get incredibly hard to manage. And what if you want to take advantage of all the benefits of VMs and containers and have the ability to easily scale all these components in or out uh, or handle situations where uh, a VM or container goes offline and you want to replace that bad instance automatically? Uh, how do you manage all the networking aspects of thousands of hosts or containers uh, that support hundreds of different services? Well, this is where our orchestration tools come into the picture. They help us out by orchestrating things like fleets or pools of virtual machine hosts or managing potentially hundreds or thousands of containers that comprise our services. Orchestration tools typically have some built-in monitoring capabilities to detect if a component goes offline or gets into some kind of uh, unhealthy state. Uh, and it can take automated actions to replace that component. These monitoring capabilities usually extend to looking at performance type metrics as well. Uh, then you can use these tools to create uh, scaling logic if you have a sudden spikes of traffic or CPU load or uh, some type of memory pressure on your applications. Uh, these tools can respond automatically by scaling out to balance that increased load across uh, more containers or VMs. Now, popular orchestration tools are projects like Kubernetes, uh, Docker Swarm, then we have uh, HashiCorp's Nomad, uh, OpenShift, uh, and then we have uh, some cloud provider managed versions of these like uh, Amazon EKS, uh, Google Cloud Platform's uh, GKE, uh, and there's many more. Um, now, I just wanted to give a few specific examples of what uh, some of these orchestration tools are just as a reference. So how do all these orchestration tools actually relate to this infrastructure's code stuff we're talking about here? Well, the way you configure these orchestration tools is typically all done through code. Uh, you would use configuration files that are often uh, based off uh, YAML or some form of templating syntax. Uh, redefine all the networking, uh, load balancing, DNS, uh, and then the monitoring or scaling capabilities we mentioned. Now, the setup of these orchestration tools and how you define your services, um, you know, the storage, networking, and other aspects of your running applications is all typically configured through code. These configuration files that define your orchestration tool settings uh, and the definitions of all your services and the VMs and containers that uh, they all manage can all be version controlled and handled just like any other code-based resource or application. All right, so now we move on to our last category here of infrastructure's code tools, and that's provisioning tools. So provisioning tools are focused on the job of actually deploying or creating infrastructure resources. Now, there's often some overlap between these IAC categories, but the image templating tools, configuration management tools, and orchestration tools are intended for defining the code and configuration that would run on a given resource like a server. So maybe you'd use a templating tool like Packer to build a virtual machine image with the operating system and software packages installed, uh, or use a tool like Docker to build a container image with all the necessary libraries to run a certain application. Then you'd use a configuration management tool like Ansible or Salt to manage the configuration files and apply upgrades and patches on the server. Or perhaps for those Docker images you created, you have an orchestration tool like Kubernetes. Uh, you have all your application services defined in a YAML format, which runs your Docker containers on the worker nodes that are part of your Kubernetes cluster. Now these orchestration tools sound great, uh, but there's something missing here. Now, all these tools are you know, amazing at packaging up code to run on servers or help us maintain the operations and configuration of fleets of servers. But what about the servers themselves and all the other uh, core infrastructure components we may need, like uh, our networking setup, uh, load balancers, uh, storage components? Um, all this is a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Uh, you know, We want to have our orchestration tool to manage our complex virtual machines or container-based applications. But how do we provision all the underlying resources we need to deploy these orchestration tools on in the first place? How do we set up our underlying network infrastructure, uh, the storage components, virtual machines, um, or even launch a managed orchestration tool like Amazon EKS in a codified way? Well, 
the creation of all these core infrastructure resources is the job of the provisioning tools. These tools can create all the hundreds or thousands of infrastructure resources that come together to build your entire infrastructure end-to-end. -end. Now, some popular provisioning tools come from our public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud Platform. Um, and these tools allow us to deploy resources that they offer in a uh, codified infrastructure as code way. These are tools like Amazon CloudFormation, uh, Azure Resource Manager, and Google Cloud Platform's Deployment Manager. Uh, and then outside of these native cloud provider infrastructures code provisioning tools, we have tools like Pulumi and Drumroll, yes, Terraform. Uh, Terraform fits into this infrastructures code provisioning tool category, and it's a very powerful tool in the space. And that's what we're here to learn all about. All right, so we know what infrastructure as code is all about now uh, and the main categories of techniques and tools to actually implement infrastructure as code uh, are scripts, uh, image templating tools, configuration management tools, uh, those VM and container orchestration tools, and of course, our provisioning tools that allow us to actually deploy the underlying infrastructure components we need. But after covering all these categories in uh, the last couple lessons here, uh, let's take a step back and ask, why even bother with this infrastructure as code stuff? Well, we'll be diving into the benefits of infrastructure as code in the next lesson uh, and answering that exact question. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.